Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to go through the sequencer inside Synth Master 2. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Okay, so let's start. I've just launched Synth Master 2. Let's uh, go and select an init preset, which will sound like so. Okay, let's decrease a little bit the volume because sometimes it's too high. Okay, perfect. Now let's apply filter one. Sounds nicer and also filter two, why not? Okay, perfect. So what I want to do is to go through what it says here, SEQ for sequencer, which is an internal sequencer for Synth Master 2. It's not a MIDI sequencer, it works on parameters um, inside the Synth Master 2, the synth, synth itself. So what I want to do is to apply the sequencer, in this case, sequencer 1, because it says, yes, sequencer 1. Remember, if you click and hold, you can choose up to four different sequencer, which at the moment it says no target. So we click here on uh, frequency for uh, filter 1, like so. We select add modulation, then sequencer, and then we choose sequencer number 1. As you have seen there, there were... Uh, six sequencer instead of four because the additional two are for compatibility reasons. So as you click now here and hold, you will find that there is one target for sequencer number one. So let's click and hold and see what happens here on the frequency, on the, on the display, but also on the dial. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, eight steps here which are defined here by the number eight. So if you want to change that, change that to four, for example, in the case you have only four. When uh, in time uh, you are at the beginning of a step, it go up to a maximum and you can see this graph moving to the right hand side and also the frequency moving up on the dial and then it slowly uh, is coming down as per this waveform, which is on this, uh, in one of these steps. So, Let's try again. So you can see the animation on the dial as well, not only on the display. So as I mentioned, you can change the number of steps that are played. It goes from the left to the right. And when it reaches the far right, it will start again to the step that is defined here by loop start. So for example, if I select number two here, you see the uh, steps two to four, which are different colors. So what happens is it will start to play from one, two, three, and four. When it gets to the end of four, it will start from number two again. Like so. Now, if you want to change the speed, you can act on this dial here. So let's increase the speed. Perfect. If you notice as well on the dial here, the changes happen from where the dial is up and then it coming, it's coming down. When this so, uh, waveform reaches zero, it is actually uh, at this point here on the dial. If you click bipolar here, you will find that it will go also below that setting on the dial. So it will spread equally between left and right on the dials. So let's try. In this case, it sounds quite different because uh, instead of uh, having the uh, cutoff frequency stopping at this level where it shows on the dial, we go down to zero. Okay, so remember that. So let's deactivate that. Um, the other thing you can do in terms of tempo is you can synchronize it to bit per minute, like so. You see it's going very slow at the moment. You can adjust the speed here with these two multiplier. So the first one, you can say one to one, so it will go faster and you can continue like so for example one to two even faster or you can also multiply or divide um adding another multiplier multiplier number two so in this case let's multiply divided by three so it would be much faster 
When you are in sync tempo, you can still use the speed dial. And in that case, it will allow you to go from that speed to almost zero, i.e. from the speed which has been synchronized to the almost zero. Let's try. Almost zero is slightly moves. Okay, so let's deactivate synth, sync, and uh, let's re like so at this speed. Next, the things I want to show you is the amount that um, in this case is modulated on the frequency cutoff, how high it goes, it depends by the waveform, but also by these parameter, the volume. So let me show you, pay attention to what happens to the graph and also to the dial as it decreases the volume. It's like decreasing the intensity that the waveforms will apply for each step to uh, the target which is being modulated. And if you do something like that, for example, where you have very little intensity, but you increase a lot of the speed, you can have something like a tremolo. Which sound quite nice. So let's increase back the volume, let's decrease the speed. Next, we can introduce some noise in terms of, of how the intensity is applied. So again, pay attention to the dial and the display. You will see random uh, noise added to the value of the modulation. So let's decrease the speed and try. You can see noise has been added, so it moves uh, rather left and right, in, uh, and that is the noise applied to the intensity of the modulation. And it can become quite chaotic. Of course, you might wonder. Next, you can adjust the lag, which is like um, uh, adding uh, almost a, a delay, as it says, like, but also smoothing a little bit that waveform, that so tooth. Which is nice. You can also change the gate, uh, i.e. how open it is uh, um, for playing for each step. So let me show you, like so. As you can see, is decreasing how long it keeps that uh, modulation for each step. It's almost like a pulse in this way, which is quite nice if you increase the speed. One thing you notice is that as I'm playing different notes, the modulation start for each note because the trigger is set to poly. If you want to have it synchronized, go to mono. Of course, if you prefer that behavior. Okay, let's go back to Pauline now. The next thing I want to show you is this envelope here. So let's click on it. So here is where you can define how um, the modulation start and ends through a typical ADSR um, envelope. So for example, you can add some delay at the beginning. In this case, you wait for that delay, roughly 1.3 seconds, and then it will kick off with the modulation. Or you can give it a, a longer attack, like so. So roughly to one second, and also change the curvature. In that case, it is more gradual, the way that the modulation is applied, which is maybe what you want. Next, you have release time and slope as well. So in order to see this, particularly when you add the release time, you can see the time has been added here to the right side, but you really need to change the final level, like so. And then you can also act on the curvature as well, like so. Now, I left, I let go the note that you don't hear very much the release on the modulation. That's because from an ADSR perspective, the release time is too low, so you have to increase that. So let's try. That's better, so let's give it a longer time. 
Okay, a little bit longer. Of course, if you have the release time shorter, you will notice the modulation will stop and it will go down to just a constant sound in this case. And then let's decrease a little bit more the release. Perhaps a little bit more uh, release time. And uh, a little bit uh, like so. So it goes down a little bit like so. And perhaps the level down to zero, final level. You see, it stops very quickly. Let's increase now the release time. So in that case, you heard that uh, um, the release time has acted on stopping the modulation, and then it went uh, back to being just the normal sound without the modulation applying to the cutoff frequency. And let's try again. So let's give it a little bit more release time this time. You can hear that at the end, that it stops the modulation. So remember, that's a way that you can adjust the envelope in which the modulation from this each sequencer is applied. Okay, let's go back to the sequencer view with the different steps and let's increase that gate to maximum. Now, here we have a crossfade with mode single and double. I'm going to explain that going inside this zoom view. If you click on where it says plus with this icon, so you have a, a, a maximized screen for the sequencer view. So as you can see here from the um, from the left, you have the bipolar and trigger selection, but then you have these um, single and also double mode which you selected. So let's select double. In this case, you can see it doubled the number of steps. So let's adjust uh, the waveform. So what do you see here? The dot. Click and hold. Let's adjust it, move it up and down like so. So let's give it a different shape like that. So that is quite different from the wave shape that you see below. As I'm playing, you see this waveform in the middle between the two, and that is controlled by the parameters on crossfade. Crossfade dial, you can actually move from this waveform to this other one for each of the step, which is quite um, nice. You also have an additional dial here, which is randomized, which act on the output in terms of applying that modulation. So you, if you activate that, you will find that some step will sound louder, louder than others. So experiment with that, which is quite nice. Um, then we have uh, also here a Y grid which is very helpful when you work with many steps and in different edit mode. For example, let's have 12 um, on the Y grid and let's increase the number of step to 14. So quite busy, as you can see. Now, once I have done that, what I can do, where it says here, edit normal, I can change the normal to step. And when I have it to step, if I click on, let me go back to single, would you see better? If I click on each of the step like so, I can change it by step. And therefore you can see why um, the grid is important from a Y axis and also number of steps. The other mode that you can choose is glide. So in this case, you can glide from one to the next step. You can still change the parameter if you like, like so, right? You can change up and down by the R, the glide from one level to the other. You can also set it to up. So you click somewhere here, it will go up and it will go up to the step, which is the bin defined, uh, like so. Or you can set it to go uh, down, which is the opposite of up, like so. And you can do some nice, interesting shape like that. Or 
what you can do, you can go freehand. And this is where you need a lot of steps and a lot of divisions in the Y grid. So you click and hold and draw something. Normally what happens, you get uh, with uh, the beginning here and the end, which is not um, matching properly. So in this case, what I normally do, I select glide and then uh, I adjust it like so. And then I adjust that point like that. Okay, but that is uh, up up to you how you prefer to actually uh, modify the curvature of each step. So let's go back to uh, now having only um, four steps, like so, and having uh, uh, why not a mode of down, like so, and let's do something like that. steps I just created. Now, if I exit this view, I can still change the crossfade here, which is nice. So you can see why I showed you how to use the crossfade inside the, um, uh, the zoomed view because you can see all the different steps. You can see the doubling the steps and therefore changing the different waveforms. Okay, that is all uh, there is in terms of sequencer. So you can apply four sequencer to four different targets. So as you can see, a lot of potential as you would expect from Synth Master 2. I hope you enjoyed the tutorials and you're following the series on Synth Master 2. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.